Alrighty guys, I'm Casey and welcome back to some stone block 2 guys. Last episode we set this up right here. This is our tree farm that is going to be generating us trees. I think I forgot to put uh, jungle saplings in those ones. That's no problem. We've got an oak sapling there. But that's okay, I'll get those saplings put in in a minute. I want to talk about what I want to do in this episode. And that is automate the sieving and hammering process. So if we go over here, you guys can see that uh, we have, we get these. And what I want to do is I want to automate getting gravel, sand and dust. As well as automate the sieving of it so that we end up with just these raw materials right here. And then we can start processing them and getting our gems and our resources without any more effort. So, that's what today's episode is going to be all about. So, if you're looking forward to this episode, do me a favor, leave it a like and hit subscribe. And without any further ado, let's get into the episode. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the quest book and we are actually going to collect some rewards because I've got quite a few re rewards that I have not claimed yet. So, uh, let's just go ahead and claim all of those. And it looks like we've got some over here at Myth Mythical Agriculture. So, we'll go ahead and... Uh, you please move so I can claim my reward? Brilliant. What do we get here? Uh, we got this builder. That's good. Uh, we got this mechanical crafter. That's all right. Simple auto smoter. Brilliant. Exchanging gadget. I don't know what that does. And we got some hoppers. So it, it wasn't great stuff, but it wasn't too bad stuff. I'm going to go charge this up and then we can have a little look to see what it does. So basically looking this up. It just allows us to place blocks without actually mining them. It doesn't seem like it's all that useful. So, I mean, I'll, I'll charge it up. We might find a use of it. But anyway, the first thing that I want to do in this episode is actually start sieving through this bunch like we start every episode. Sieving has been done and we've got ourselves a fair bit of resources now. So we can actually start looking at how we are going to automate all of this. But first... I'm going to need some magmatic dynamos for power. So I need some invar. And I forget exactly how to make invar. I remember it's nickel and iron, but I forget what the actual blend is. It's two iron to one nickel. So what we're going to do is we're going to need a few of these. So we'll throw two iron in. We'll throw one nickel in. We'll turn that off. Give that chance to invar. I've got a couple of witches in there. So I'm producing blood like nobody's business. But I've got a really cool idea for how I want these to look. And I've started this corridor here. We're going to go down here. This is going to have our little, if you will, corridor of smelting and all of that kind of stuff. The sieving, the breaking down of stuff, it's all going to go on over here. So I need to get some more of this corridor worked out while that finishes up over there. And then this side of the farm, this side of the corridor is going to venture off into the farming error. So we are going to start moving through the errors. But first things first... Let me finish off this corridor. Don't you just love it when you're sat, you're recording, you're having a good time, and then all of a sudden you realize that your wire came out of your freaking mic. So we've got to redo this again. So, we, what we want to do now, I've still got the corridor to finish off, but I'm waiting on brick. So while we wait on brick, I figured, you know what? Let's move on to the next bit in the chain. What we're going to be doing is setting up an auto sieving and auto hammering. So the first thing we need to do is turn cobble into gravel. Now we sort of know how we do this by just hammering it. And we can use that logic to find something called a auto hammer. This time I spot hammer right. Last time I put two commas instead of an M. It's what you get when the keys are right next to each other on the keyboard. And there's this compressed hammer, this regular hammer. We're just going to use a regular hammer. It requires a diamond hammer, which is great and easy enough. It requires a couple of weighted pressure plates. That's fine. I've already made one up here, but... Uh, we are going to go through a couple of these, so it's, it's perfectly fine. And there we go. There is the hammer. Now all we need to do is grab some cobblestone and throw it in the hammer, and nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, that's because it needs power, just like a lot of machines in, in this do. So we'll put down our magmatic dynamo there. We'll go ahead and grab our crescent wrench. Uh, we'll flip this. I did this last time. Flip this the wrong way. There we go. I've got a drum of lava around here somewhere. There it is. So we'll put the drum of lava right there. And then this is only temporary, guys. I'm going to move this into a more permanent location. But I figured we'd set it up together first. So actually, no. I, I, I want that to run behind. Just like that. And then we can tell this to extract. Ignored. Good. 
This is now getting power. That's fantastic. That's exactly what we want. We just need to get the power out of this and into this. Now, we could just pop this down in front of this and that would work fantastically. Yes, it would. Trouble with that is I don't think one dynamo is going to provide enough power for this. I'm not sure how much this takes or how much we're going to need, but uh, we're going we're gonna to science that right here. So, what we can do is we can link up a couple of these. If we grab a second magmatic dynamo, uh, we'll just use two for now. Pop that there. You can see that's getting, getting lava. I'll rotate that just once. What we can do is we can hook up multiple of them. Uh, that's, that's not what I want to do. By using something called a flux duct. Now, I messed this up before. I thought this was called an energy duct. But it's not. It's called a flux duct. And what this does is this transfers energy. So we're missing redstone. Give me my redstone. I know I had some. And we go ahead and just link this up. Boom. There's our redstone. And then all we got to do is link this up like so. And fantastic. This is now, as you can see, getting power. This is consuming 40 RF per tick. And I think these generate 20 RF per tick. 30. So two is more than capable of handling one of these. Trouble is, we don't have... Well, we do have an infinite supply of lava. But I've got a feeling this is going to use lava quicker than what we can produce it. So we need to set up some sort of lava generation and figure out just how much lava we need for this to suffice. So I've set up this little contraption right here. we got a cobblestone here. This is going to simulate a cobblestone generator. We will put one in the final setup. Leading in to this crucible, which is then smelting lava. And then we need a way to get the lava out of here. So I'm going to get this. Uh, that's my item duct. This Arden fluid stone. We'll take that up there. Put a servo on. Extract. Ignored. And we're going to hope that this might be enough to power this. This lava is full. This magmatic dynamo is full. But I don't think this is... Oh, yeah. This is still doing that. So this is all good. We're going to leave this to run just a little bit. This one is starting to lose power. So we'll just leave this to run just for a little bit and see if this is sustainable. I don't think it's going to be though. So to my surprise, one torch is actually sustaining this. We're actually gaining power in here now. So this is actually pretty good. Oh, we are losing power in this one now. Okay, maybe, maybe I spoke a little bit too soon. Maybe this is using a bit more. I logged out and logged back in. So maybe it's, or maybe this one is picking up the slack this time. Whereas this one is just going to chill. I guess we'll sort of see where that levels out. But I'm going to go and try and get a more permanent home for these guys. Because this is not a good place. So here it is in all its glory. We've got our auto ammers set up. Just how I set them up before. We've got a cobblestone generator here going into a storage drawer. Going into a auto hammer. Going into a basic drawer right here. So it's turning it into gravel. Over on this side we've got some... Crucibles producing power using lava, which is fantastic. Cobblestone generator up there. Generator the cobblestone for this seems to be backing up nicely. These all seem to be either full or exhausted, depending on which one we go with, which is also really, really good. But the next thing is auto sieving this gravel. And how do we do that? Well, let's get back to our main room. So to do this, we already know how we sieve. All we need to do is automate it. Now there are a few different ways that you can automate it. But we're going to use it by using the auto sieve right here. So some iron blocks, iron ingots, some glass panes and a couple of those. We're going to make two of these just for now. And this works very much how you would expect it to work. The resources we are getting in here, this gravel. All we want to do is extract that and pop it into the sieve. So. We'll grab our servo. The sieve also needs power, so I've connected it to power. We ignore this. And then what we shall see is it says no mesh because we need a mesh. We'll just pillage one for the sake of this instructional part of the video. So we'll just... No, give me... Please stop that game. I do not wish to place the torch. We're going to seal our iron mesh for this. And we're just going to throw it in to here like so. And then it will start sieving... Like so. Now I'm hoping that we still have enough power from these two. But if not, we can always up that. I'm going to let this run a little bit just to see if it starts to lose power or not. But as you can see, we're already getting stuff from it. So the good news is three dynamos looks to be a good number for this. They've all got no RF in them, but they are slowly gaining in power. This one has zero in it. This one has zero. 
This one has zero, but this is actually gaining power. It's not losing power. And this one, I believe, is also gaining power. So they are gaining power from three. Now, I have got a uranium block underneath this crucible, generating us some lava. Now, if you don't know how to get uranium, it's very, very easy. You get this uranium grip from sifting, I believe it was sand uh, or dust. I believe it's sand, though. And you just smelt this down. You can also smelt this in the Tinker Smelter. You only get one ingot no matter which way you do this. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. But you just use nine of these to craft a block of uranium like so. And boom. And this has a 20 times multiplier on the rate at what this does. Whereas the torch is just one. And even lava is only three. So it's a great way just to produce a bunch of lava. We should see that these do start to slowly gain RF once it is topped up this machine. That machine is now fully topped up good so we should start to see these gaining this one is now gaining which is great now i need to go and implement this over at the actual farm this is the finished product of the cvm we already saw the hammer in i'm going to simply going just from one of these because i do want to have a gravel deposit in this world so we've got gravel farm there and then this gravel is being sieved which is then going into this chest now i am going to do something with this chest this storage a little bit later on but this is only step one of the sieving. We're sieving gravel, but we also need to sieve sand and dust. I'm not too concerned about dirt at this point, but sand and dust is definitely something that I want to sieve. So I want to add in another one of these sort of hallway things that we've got going on here. Now I am running a little bit low on bricks, so that's why a lot of this hallway is unfinished. And I haven't done the floor yet, simply because I need sand for the sandstone. And I can't be bothered to simply... Go ahead and break it down when we are going to be setting up a sand farm in a moment. So there's no point in me in me doing the sand manually when I could just get it from the farm and do it while it runs. But anyway, this seems to be holding. This is expired. This is empty. This is almost empty. So it looks like this is just keeping up these three, which is good. This is still gaining a little bit of food, a little bit, but we can actually increase these further if need be in a bit. So we might get on that, but I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start out the sand. So to do sand, it's fairly easy. We've got this one doing gravel. So all we need to do is we need to add into this line once, take the gravel and break the gravel down into dirt. We should see this extract the gravel from here, right into here. This one will then start breaking it down and turning it into dirt. So we just need to add one more into the chain right here. Do this. Ignore. This is going to take the dirt. This one will start hammering the dirt down and turning it into sand. And then all we got to do is add a sieve at the end right here. And that will then start sieving the gravel. And of course, we need to put this into a chest. So let's just go ahead and extract there. And we'll, we'll do a double chest just for the time being. It looks like four of these is not enough. Actually, it looks like we're just... We're at a cobblestone. Now, with cobblestone added and a mesh in here, this is going to start auto receiving us sand, which is then going to deposit it all in this chest. I did click uh, to ignore. Yes, I did. So there it is. Look, we've got our aluminium or aluminium, depending on where you're from. I like to say aluminium because I'm British, but uh, some people say aluminum. Or however they... Say it. <laughs> but anyway, you can see now that this is a process that we've got to do. So now I need to move this process over into its actual home over there in that corridor. As we progress forth, leaving behind the gravel seeding farm, we get over here and we've got the sand grieving, grieving, grieving farm. Yes, we are mourning the death of sand. No. We've got the sand farm. Now, this is almost fully operational. You can see we're missing a uh, hammer here. We're missing a couple of servos here and there. But that is because my redstone situation is dire. So rather than go and manually sieve redstone, I thought we'd start work on automating the redstone. But as you can see, we've got the magmatic dynamos over here powering it. We've got the uh, crucibles over here. They seem to be providing more than enough lava for what we need, which is great. And all I need is a couple of servos and one more hammer. I think I've miscounted here. I think I actually need another hammer here. But uh, I can rectify that more when we've got redstone. But for right now, this is working fantastic. I've also started work on where the dust is going to be. And that's what we're going to do now. The process of doing dust is very easy. It's very similar to what we've been doing. We take a hammer. 
that's making us cobble into gravel. We then grab another hammer. This hammer then makes us gra- uh, words. Makes the gravel into dirt. Then we go ahead and we had another one down. This makes the dirt into sand. Extract. Brilliant. Then what we need to do is we need to make the sand into dust, which is, yes, as you've guessed, we just need to add one more to the end of this. And that should be it. I think I'm actually one short here. Because that's going to make dirt into sand. Oh, no, no, yes, it's going to make sand into dust. Yeah, no, we're fine, we're fine. So we'll put the sieve down here. Put this right here. Uh, we want to grab our crescent hammer because I don't actually want this to connect to the chest right here. And then all we're going to do is tell this to extract. And then we can put one right here with, again, an extract on here. Brilliant. And that should start auto sieving us. Whoops, a daisy, don't do that. Should start auto sieving us dust. All we need to do is add a mesh to this. It does look like I'm going to need some power over here. So I think, I think I'm going to just switch this to over here. And there it is. Sieving dust automatically. Brilliant. This is going to get us pretty much everything that we want. So I've had a bit of a clean up here. I've still got a few chests to th sort through. Just got a cobblestone while we're heading this way. And I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the updated area. I've still got a little bit to finish off. But I thought I just wanted to walk through the base. As you can see, it starts to change through the ages. This is a vision that I had in mind. We definitely need to add in the sand here. But like I said earlier on, I wasn't going to do this until I had a sand generator. Just to save me some time. But now we should do. I mean, it's not really producing that much sand because I do need one more hammer to make it work. Which I'll get on in a moment. But this is the area for the dust. We've got the... Uh, Lava generators over here with the uranium blocks underneath. Cobblestone generators feeding them. This tends to be a bit overkill. And we've got these magmatic dynamos again, slightly overkill. And then over here, we've got it working. We've got it going from, from cobblestone that starts here, going into gravel, going into... Well, this one is hammering it into sand. This one's hammering it into dirt. This one's hammering it down into dust. And so on and so forth. Eventually ending up right here where it's all going to be sieved. Now... Obviously, these chests aren't going to be long-term storage, and I was going to get into that, but I'm looking at the time of this episode, and I'm not entirely certain I'm going to have enough time to do that. But, I think my next task is to sort of somewhat finish off... Actually, did I, did I put all the stairs in? I thought I still had stairs to put in. I must have put all the stairs in. Yeah, my next task is to go ahead and craft up this hammer and start putting in this floor. I've had another cleanup. We're finally all organized in this world. It looks good. And I just love the feeling. You can tell this is part of the base that we start out in right here. Then as we start to move here, we start to move more into the industrial age. I want to move more into another age as we go over there. I want to have two different ages over here. I want to have a farming age. But I also want to have a more industrial, more futuristic age. Where we start getting some more really crazy and overpowered farms. That just produce ridiculous amounts of stuff that we're never going to use. Because that's fun. But now with the... With the flooring in, this starts to feel a bit more like a part of the base. I did over here when I had this in. I did move this over here because I miscounted this bit. But uh, it still works out. I'm not sure what I want to do back there just yet. But it's still not 100%. I still need two more ammos. And it turns out these dynamos are not keeping up once I've got in the rest of the hammers. They're starting to struggle a bit. So in the next episode, I want to look at upgrading these somewhat so that we can actually start to produce more power so that these they, they don't get stuck, you know? But it really does feel like a part of the base. I also replaced the lava down here with uranium blocks too. I thought the lava would be good enough, but uh, alas, I was wrong. There's also room here for three more if I need them. I'm hoping that I don't, but uh, this is like a test in area for me to see if, uh, if I can have one crucible per dynamo. Right now, I can, but... Uh, when we upgrade these, it's it's going to be a different story. So this looks really good. I'm really, really happy with this. And I want to talk about what's going to happen over the next couple of episodes. So in the next episode, I think what I want to do is I want to add a storage room for this here. And then I also want to look at possibly getting into more power or more, or more farming age, I'm thinking. But uh, yeah. That's kind of like my plan for the next couple of episodes is to start getting 
a more larger power source for farms. But uh, now we've got that, it's good. And then probably automating the sieving and the, the graveling and the crafting and all that more than we already are. Or maybe we'll just go ahead and go into the mining dimension because that's something we need to do. We need staircase to the mining dimension. Maybe we go and set up a mine or a quarry in there. That could always be something. But now that we've got the quest book, we should have unlocked a couple more quests here. Uh, yeah, this one. One. We managed to do one quest this entire episode. But we might go down this road. There are a few routes that we still need to go down. A mob farm is something that I need to do too. I'd forgotten about a mob farm. That could be fun. Yeah, I like the idea of a mob farm. Maybe that's going to be the next episode. What did we get from our thingy? We got an induction smelter. Oh, that's actually pretty good. An induction smelter will be very helpful. Very helpful. Oh, I also upgraded all of the chests to iron chests now. So that our storage is looking a little bit better. We do need to get into better storage too. But, uh, yeah. I think that, that, that went into the, to the wrong chest. I guess it belongs in uh, this chest. But yeah, guys, that is going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor. Leave it a like and hit subscribe. And as always, I'm Casey. You're the awesome folks. Thank you so much for watching now. Take care. Bye-bye.